I would like to really appreciate the awards that we have uh, been awarded, that the Pinnacle Awards Kenya Flower Council. It means so much to Kasima. Kasima's pillars, uh, the two main pillars are environmental and social sustainability. To get uh, uh, both our community uh, award for community projects that we're doing and also for how we are treating our waste uh, matter has actually hit both nails as it were, <laughs> on the head. So we are, we are very proud and we must understand that everything has to come from a team work uh, that we have at Casima. One focused goal for the team, and I will say team, I'm just a spokesman for the people that are working here, that uh, they have really come together, we have come together, uh, not only to be a gold standard farm, but also to go for these high steps into environmental and social. Um, sustainability and very very proud to have received these awards and to have been nominated actually so thank you for the whole of Casima staff for for us getting these awards see them here yeah and you can feel that that is just so beautiful okay so this actually two things we're doing here is we're making vermicompost yeah and then we make this this stuff called worm juice so all our rose waste goes into these the, these jars um, and these worms are uh, taking the soil taking all our, our um, uh, rose waste they're digesting it and then they are uh, uh, going through the worms and then as they go through the worms it then comes out as a liquid okay and the liquid that we use is called worm juice and it's very very we we, we have enough liters here mm -hmm. to irrigate the whole farm and it's the most it's the most powerful fertilizer that you can use okay so the plastic that we have on top is old plastic from the greenhouse roofs that that have ripped the uh wood is all recycled wood from the old wooden greenhouses that we used to have the, the plastic on top, uh, this is old, old trough material that we used to use for hydroponics and because we've gone back to nature and gone back to soil, we no longer need to use uh, hydroponic troughs. So we've used that to do the site, we build with it and to support the, the waterproofing of the, so everything is recyclable. And what do we get from that? Well, I'll show you. Non a yeah. Worm juice, man. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> so that is worm juice. Now that's the most purest form of, uh, of fertilizer that you can get. And we're on the subject of water, which is, which is so important, uh, not only for, for a flower farm or any farm, but really important for our communities. Um, and it is, again, everything to do with sustainability and how we, we're going to move forward. So what is sustainability? It, it, it can mean many things and some people have veered away from uh, what sustainability means. Sustainability is not where we are now, not where we are in five years, it's, it's where we are in, in 20 years and years to come. Building a lagoon like this, where what are we looking at? We're looking at how to harness a water, how to harness the springs that are actually in this area, how to enhance the biodiversity by planting trees, special flowers that we've got for the insects that we need. The way that we have put these 20 litre jerry cans, which had uh, fermented fertilizer in before, we've also, uh, as, as lifesavers, but also what we've done is made, made a, a roosting ground for the birds, both that are, are with us resident and the migratory birds. We have then made sure that the water flows in a way naturally down uh, without the use of any machinery into lagoons by the use of gravity. We've then diverted the water, which will go that into the Ngarandari forest, which will help the environment and the, ins in the animals that are there. The excess water will then go down into the communities, and we have made sure that they have access to that water. So what does that do? That encompasses everything that we call sustainability. That encompasses everything that we are about as Cosima. So by harnessing these springs, we're actually now serving all the purposes that we can. We're taking in consideration our environment, we're taking into consideration our community around us and we're taking into consideration our, our business running it in a sustainable way. So if you look at this lagoon, it, it was built last year. What we have done is uh, at the top end there, we have 
a, a series of springs that come even from uh, across that tarmac road. That tarmac road is the main road that's going down to Meru Isiolo Junction. But we have uh, tapped springs on both sides and brought it down under and through into this, uh, into this lagoon. So what I, what I really wanted to show you here, this is how we're harnessing springs on Kasima. And the water that's coming through here, we're collecting in a series of lined reservoirs, which are coming uh, from the top of the hill all the way down. So you can see that everything is on a slope. So not only are we collecting uh, rainwater from every greenhouse, we're also collecting water from the spring. Okay. Now, there's several springs that we're doing that. And we've just recently built a new uh, lagoon, which uh, will hold water. And that is, is 100,000 uh, 100, plus uh, meter cube of water. Uh, the rainfall or the lack of it, dependent on the year, is something that worries us. But what also worries us is we're seeing the rain coming much faster and harder. And we are now covering all our crops. So we've invested a lot of money on this is the first structure to cover all our outdoor crops. Where we could grow them outdoor before, we're going to put a covering over uh, to protect them from hail. But also, they will use less water because they will be uh, inside a greenhouse. Kasima Farm, as a total, because we have a forestry department, yeah, we did, um, I can't get, it's, it's thousands of trees. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands, okay? Uh, us alone, we did about 5,000. And I'll explain what we do here. Uh, every single member of staff um, has their own tree, okay? So every single member of staff has planted their own tree, okay, including all the management. What that means is that as you plant your tree, you are going to be looking after that tree. So what the problem is, is large tree plantings that done in Kenya very often is... We'll, we'll get them from the nursery, we'll plant them, and then we won't water them. So we're back to square one. When you have ownership of a tree, in fact, I've got three trees, and mine aren't doing very well, <laughs> but they're growing, yeah? But we, we have ownership, so we're, we're, we're then looking after our own tree. So we, we've got, we've got uh, these trees, we've had a 100% survival rate. Obviously, the rain has helped us this year. I do agree on that. But, we, but you will see uh, the, st the, the staff coming to look at the trees, their own trees, seeing how they grow. And it's a sense of pride and it's a sense of ownership. If we could do more of that in Kenya, I'm talking getting communities to be able to do that and guiding and helping, it would really uh, benefit Kenya. Just simple things like that, simple things like let's get guttering on our roofs, let's get water tanks, uh, Let's plant trees in, in, in proper ways. Let's do sustainable farming practices. Let's harness water. Let's see what we can do, thinking out of the box, okay? That, for me, is so important. But it has to be done in a way that somebody actually appreciates what they're doing and has ownership over what they're doing. So I'm bringing you into, into a greenhouse. This is one of our newer greenhouse. Um, it's two hectares, uh, gross area. Now, what's very important if we're going to look at growing our flowers in, in, a, in a natural way, is to be able to uh, look at the climate around us. So you'll see that this greenhouse is taller than most greenhouses that you'll get uh, in Kenya. We've, we've actually increased the gutter height. But what we've also got is a, a way of being able to open all four sides. So during the wet, air, wet times and times when there's high humidity, we get a lot of air coming through, so it's, it's natural that the air comes through. We have to be also very careful though, once we've opened up the curtains, that we're not uh, bringing in unwanted insects. Because of the changing climate, we do actually get plagues of uh, insects coming and we have to be very, very aware of how to control them. So you'll see that there's thrip net all around the greenhouse and that, that on all the vents there's netting as well. So it's very important. If I come down here and show you this is a newer greenhouse, all water that we put on is basically through drip line and we have uh, computers in here which will be showing us where our water sa saturation point is so we've actually got probes in here you can see the hair root and we're actually if you can do that with the soil we know that we have moisture within the soil we're very conscious that we're not over watering our, our crop we're not under watering our crop and that uh, our soils at all times are fed 
uh, with the organic material. So I've shown you the worm juice. We're using a uh, uh, sterilized uh, compost that we're making as well. The, the soil is everything. It, 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 is, it is what is going to give you the crop. It's going, it's going to give you the production. It's going to give you the health of the crop. What are we looking for? We're looking for carbon sink. We're looking for a beneficial um, bacteria and microbes. And in the end, what we're looking for is a mycorrhiza, which is the sort of pinnacle of, of what we want in the top of our soil going down into our roots. The healthier your root structure, the healthier your soil. And that is what we are looking at. That's a natural way of looking at the growing. You'll see that around us in the greenhouse, we have several different traps that we use. Uh, these blue traps are in place actually to catch uh, what we call thrip. Below there, we have some yellow traps. These are sticky, sticky traps, which we are using for whitefly. We are also uh, in the process now of putting pheromone traps in, which to, are to catch certain uh, notifiable pests uh, if they are in the area. Um, or insects that we don't want. Okay, so it's all called a, a integrated pest management control, IPM. And I think people who understand flower farming know all about IPM. And flower farms in Kenya have adopted IPM. We may be a little bit different in what we're doing with the soils, but we're not unique in, in, in having the IPM around us and looking after our greenhouses. As you can see, Total hygiene. We keep everything very, very clean. We have a very set way of doing things in the greenhouse. So whereas we're outside with all our biodiversity and, and got the weeds feeding bees and looking at our tree planting and our water collection, in here, this is where we have to be controlled. We have to be very disciplined. Uh, we have to be delivering the very, very best quality that Kenya can deliver um, in roses, but not only roses, but in other crops that we're growing. So this is what a typical greenhouse looks like. So there you are.